Thank you for staying with Closing Bell South Africa. Now, just last week, Statistics South Africa released a surprising picture of accelerated growth in South Africa's manufacturing sector. Can investors and manufacturing stakeholders across the continent expect more from this glimmer of hope with this year's manufacturing endeavor approaching? Joining me in studio for more is Kunrad Pazayden Hoti, is Managing Director of Strategic Communications uh, FTI and Patu Kolonotata, who is the CEO of Buzzmark Group. Gentlemen, thank you very much for making the time to join me. Now, in the anticipation of next week and the conversations that I think are going to be staged uh, at the NW, let's have a quick conversation about what are the big expectations. We've spoken about a glimmer of hope in our introduction, but what, what realistic, realistically could be the focus? And Kulmaj, I'll start with you. Well, I think the fantastic opportunity is that tonight's obviously the State of the Nation yes. addressed by the President where he'll lay out in, um, in uh, the big themes of what they w want to achieve with the economy in the couple, next couple of years. So yeah. there'll obviously be mention of ESCOM and so on, but also what support measures are going to be rolled out to bring stability to crucial upstream sectors like yeah. manuf uh, mining and yeah. agriculture, and then also for manufacturing itself. Mm. We know, for instance, that in autos there's been a, a great success in South Africa. Exports are doing very well in that regard at the moment, mm -hmm. but we need the other incentives of programs to also start working with the same kind of reliability um, and effectiveness. And then when the manufacturing in Daba comes, there will be opportunity for government stakeholders to put greater detail uh, mm -hmm. to the big themes that the President is going to be address mm -hmm. addressing um, tonight. So I think from, from, uh, uh, from an industry point of view, yeah. it's a great opportunity uh, for people from the industry to mm -hmm. go and make themselves familiar with what the road is going to look like. So part of Paulo Conrad seems to be pretty confident that we're going to have at least a thematic focus that's going to come out of the State of the Nation address and that it's going to spill over into the conversations uh, in the Endeavour next week. Do you share the same sentiments? Yes, I share the same sentiments because uh, we've got a president uh, who's positive, who's aggressive about uh, creating jobs and employment, and uh, his focus is to actually industrialize uh, the South African economy, so we'll make sure that we can create more jobs. You would understand manufacturing is the biggest creator of jobs. Mm. Currently, you know, our countries that are consumers, um, you know, give an example like Nigeria, they have uh, old refineries, but yeah. they don't produce their own oil and all of that. It's a, it's a challenge for them because they don't have a diversified uh, economy. So, you know, a country mm. like that needs manufacturing to, be, to make sure that it can grow and take it to a different stage. In South Africa, we probably the most diverse um, manufacturing or economy yeah. in, in Africa. And we have resources, we've got uh, logistics, we've got uh, skilled people. You know, and I would even refer to you to say that uh, South Africa was ahead of China in 1992 in terms of uh, manufacturing, mm. but we're now lagging up behind, you know, mm. even in uh, South Korea. Mm. I'll talk about smart factories in, 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 in a short while because we do know that there has been some interesting developments in other parts of the continent where we're seeing markets trying to position themselves as the manufacturing hub for investors looking for that base. But before we do that, Kunrad, I think it's important to uh, to also for us to be realistic about the risks that are facing the local environment. If we look at the exchange rate volatility, for example, that, is, that we've been witnessing in the last uh, week or so in South Africa, there are lots of risks that manufacturers need to navigate. So what are the headaches that continue to be stubborn that must be taken on at the Sindaba if this is going to be a conversation that matters? So there's, there's um, upstream factors that need to be addressed. There yeah. needs to be stability around energy supply, around water supply, um, so those network industries are key, and then we need stability in mining and manufacturing because, uh, and mining and agriculture because they're such important um, upstream sectors that supply to manufacturing. Yeah. If those are unsettled, then you always see a dip in manufacturing thereafter. So uh, the electricity outages that we had in the first quarter, yeah. um, manufacturing fell by I think around 10%. Um, so the, the increase that we've now seen in April is actually off a very low base mm -hmm. uh, because we were also in recession in the beginning of last year. Yeah. So um, there's, uh, uh, there's a lot that needs to be addressed, but I think the interesting thing now is that if you come in, 
you come in at the bottom of the market. Right. Um, almost. So there's great opportunity to grow, um, a great opportunity to grow into the rest of the continent and to grow exports. Mm -hmm. And certainly we can look forward over the next five, ten years to more rational trade um, and industrial policy uh, being applied to the sector uh, in a more integrated way. And I think that kind of support policy certainty predictability yeah. will encourage investors. We've already seen yeah. investment rates increase quite significantly last year. How are, we, how are we doing, Patukolo, on the policy certainty conversation? I mean, this has been an ongoing conversation for the longest of time. Are we getting to a point where we are fairly comfortable with what, the, the, what regulates uh, the industry? Um, I'd say that uh, we're comfortable with the policies, especially in the automotive where I actually uh, play, uh, simply because um, the automotive policy have promoted most uh, big international OEMs yeah. to base their manufacturing base here. And the minimum requirement is that they must produce 50,000 cars yeah. a year. And uh, BMW, uh, Mercedes, uh, uh, Toyota, they're all doing that successfully. Now that our government has entered into the next phase of getting into the heavy commercial industry, yes. you know, which I participate, you know, there's a localization or local content. Uh, we currently comply to 96% local content locally. And uh, with that uh, allows us to be competitive, to be protected against uh, uh, foreign uh, entities. And I'm yeah. saying that it's a good thing because that protects the jobs, you know, in the mm. country, you know. When we look at the conversation around the trade wars, particularly, and I'll stay with you on this, um, do we then, should we be worried, because South Africa is firmly part of a global value chain, uh, we are, you know, we are assembling in some, in some parts of the manufacturing process, should we be concerned that if there are major disruptions in terms of trade patterns as we know them, that South Africa could actually find itself, and even other African markets that are, ma that are investing heavily in manufacturing, find themselves out of, uh, out of these global value chains that they are now dependent on? Okay, I'd say that the future of economic growth is in Africa. Africa will be growing about uh, uh, double digits, uh, not looking outside of South Africa and economically. That simply means that we are closer to the resources yeah. where, which we need to benefit. And most of the biggest problem of our African economies has been exporting our minerals to the first world uh, without value adding anything. And then those minerals comes back as a finished product, which then uh, um, uh, takes away the mm. value of, of, of manufacturing. Now we are prime and positioned for the future to say that, you know, Everyone in the world is looking at us, Africa, to say that, you know, what are we doing next to get into and to leapfrog? And the people are basing, or companies, global entities, are basing their manufacturing entities here. This is an opportunity for us. I'll simply say this to you now. It's an opportunity that um, Huawei is fighting with, uh, um, yeah. uh, with the U.S. Mm. We can do, we can manufacture those cell phones, those iPads, those uh, anything that is being done or needed by uh, Apple mm -hmm. in South Africa because we've got all the right minerals. We've got the minerals that makes the battery. We've got the minerals that makes the plastic. We've got minerals that are... Uh, uh, on chips. We've got mm. uh, equipment in that, in that space invested. We've got South African companies with capacity to manufacture TVs, everything that is, is mm. here, and the skill base is here. I'll even given I just came out from a meeting now, yeah. I was surprised to say that, you know, a South African entity is, 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 is given a job by a, a Canadian company just to do their process engineering. Right. And, uh, and I, said, I was amazed with that, uh, with that effect. It simply means that we still have the skills all what we need to do is to refine our skills and make sure that we can be able to compete globally. And I'm saying that we are best base as Africa, mm. as South Africa for us to get into the rest of the continent. So I, I want us to talk about the rest of the continent in a moment. But before we do that, um, Patricola talks a lot about opportunities. My question is, what needs to be true? for us to actually translate these opportunities to the bottom line. And essentially, it's about, Conrad, coming to the three most critical things for the manufacturing sector that would see us be the most attractive partner for international investors yeah. looking to set up their manufacturing bases here. Well, I, I, think, the, I, I think the key thing is, is that we need to um, start realizing what we have yeah. um, locally and start looking after it. So when we say 
um, things like buy local, when we say we need to use our trade policy in a smart way so that we nurture our domestic industries. That in itself is not uh, a, b about protectionism, but uh, making sure that we are able um, to bring our manufacturing capacity back online. Once you lose manufacturing capacity, it's very, once it has to be mothballed, it's very difficult to get that back. It creates, a, it, it takes a lot of investment, getting the skills back, um, it, it takes a lot. We've got more than a century uh, of manufacturing history in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Great capacity, we do precision manufacturing uh, better than the Chinese and, mm. and um, uh, as competitively as they uh, do in the east um, of Europe. So yeah. um, it's, it's harnessing those strengths mm -hmm. um, and knitting together and using examples where there's been great successes such yeah. as in uh, automotives um, to uh, replicate that co collaboration between business and government and other uh, parts of manufacturing. So we've run out of time, but I'm going to steal a final question for you, Patrukolo. Three top markets uh, in Africa where manufacturing uh, is taking off and that uh, investors could look to beyond South Africa? Okay. Um, East Africa is, uh, is taking up uh, mm -hmm. aggressively. So if you look at Kenya and Nairobi mm -hmm. and uh, Kigali, Rwanda, mm -hmm. um, those are a kind of uh, mm -hmm. definite markets that are actually uptake in terms of manufacturing. They understand to say uh, what needs to be done. The next biggest market is in the West, you know, in West Africa, which is uh, in Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah. And it's the biggest opportunity. If you set up there, you'd be 100 times the business uh, of your business currently. Uh, Egypt is a stable market in terms of manufacturing, and it could just be advanced. So if you look at it in, uh, uh, in a, in a continent-wise, it's the East, which is anchored by Nairobi, yeah. and, um, and then uh, Lagos uh, anchoring uh, the West. And, um, and then uh, Egypt anchoring the, the, north. the north. Well, there you have it. Certainly Africa is open for business and certainly open to manufacturing investment right from the north to the east to the west and definitely here in South Africa as well. A very big thank you to my guest, Kunrad Bezaiden Holt, um, as well, who is, of course, the managing director at, at Strategic Communications, FTI, and Patrick Polo Notata, who is the CEO of the Basma Group. We're going to take a short uh, break now, but when we come back, we're going to be taking a look at the South African market close to...